Hello everybody, my name is Ross Dixon and this is my video lab report for Lab 5. During the Apollo 15 space missions, astronaut David Scott demonstrated that when dropped from near the surface of the moon, a hammer and a feather would fall at the same rate. This phenomenon occurred because of a lack of air resistance on the moon. For my experiment, I will see if we can create a computer program to predict the motion of a relatively massive object that falls with negligible air resistance. By creating a model that predicts the motion of objects that are being impacted by gravity alone, we could create models to accurately predict the motion of objects on distant planets with atmospheres very different than our own. If our model is accurate, it should predict the motion of our massive object to be somewhat similar to what we've observed. Within our model, we will say that gravity is the only force acting on our object and use Newton's second law to calculate our object's position and velocity. Now onto our program. After using code from previous lab to create a way to visualize our system, we began with the initial conditions. The mass of our object was weighed beforehand, and our initial position and velocity were taken from our tracker observations, which we will talk about in a moment. Delta T remained very small, and we created a variable, g, for the gravitational constant of Earth, 9.8. Next, we created a calculation loop. Here, we used Newton's second law to calculate the net force on our object, and then updated the position of our ball with that velocity. We then moved our time step forward by delta T seconds. As you can see in our calculation loop, the only thing acting upon our net force is our weight force, which is equivalent to negative m times g times j hat. For my object, I chose to use a workout weight that weighed 8 pounds. I dropped this weight from a height of approximately 6.5 feet. Then, I analyzed the video using Tracker to map its motion, seen here. The comparison of our two data sets, our observed and predicted data, yielded fruitful results. Our observed tracker data is graphed in blue, and our predicted data is graphed in red. Upon examination, the two graphs mirrored each other very closely. Despite a few discrepancies in the positions of the two graphs, the two are very similar. In conclusion, the model I created was a relatively good predictor of our object falling without air resistance. In the future, more accurate measurements could be taken by ensuring that our parameters, for example our axes, our point mass tracking, and other things within our tracker analysis could be more exact. All in all, this is a proficient way to model how objects might move without the impact of air resistance. This method of thinking could be applied to models predicting how objects will move on the surface of other planets.